Hello and welcome to Gone Electric. Today you find me at my nearest Tesla supercharging station? Yeah, it's true. This is a new Tesla supercharging station in Carson, California. And it's got Magic Dock installed on every single stall, which means I, in a Volkswagen ID4, can charge here. All right, let's rewind a second here because some of you are probably asking yourselves, what is a Tesla Magic Dock? Tesla Magic Dock is an adapter that Tesla has fabricated into an existing Tesla supercharger post. Now it's important to note that GM and Ford recently enabled their EVs to be able to charge at Tesla superchargers with the use of a NAX adapter, which you can buy for like 200 bucks. Magic Dock is different in that you don't need an adapter that you buy third party. The Magic Dock is already in the Tesla Supercharger post. Now, the main disadvantage of the Magic Dock system is that they are somewhat far and few between. Though the network is growing, there still aren't that many Tesla Supercharging stations outfitted with the Magic Dock. Whereas GM and Ford EV owners have a lot greater access to Tesla Superchargers because they could use Magic Dock Superchargers. They could also use any V3 or newer Tesla Supercharger station as long as they have the NAX DC fast charging adapter for their car. Now, if you do want to charge at a nearby Magic Dock enabled Tesla supercharger, the first step is locating where your nearest Magic Dock is. And you can do that in the app like this. The first thing you're going to do is download the Tesla app from your app store. Then you're going to make a free account in the Tesla app using your email and a basic password. Once you've done that, you're going to open the Tesla app where you'll be brought to the homepage, which looks like this. The first thing you need to do is enter your car. So right there where it says charging, you're going to tap on that where it'll be brought to this page. And then you're going to have a chance to enter your vehicle details. So you're going to tap on that. And I've already entered that I have a Volkswagen ID4 to 2022. And then that question at the bottom where it says, do you have a NAX DC adapter? I have to select no to that because as of today, so far, Volkswagen has not been enabled to charge on the Tesla supercharger network with the NAX DC adapter. If you have a GM or a Ford EV, you have been enabled to charge on the Tesla supercharger network if you have the NAX DC adapter. But in any case, I have to select no. So now that you've entered your vehicle details, Tesla now knows which Tesla supercharger stations to show you when you go to search for available Tesla supercharger stations. So if you go back to the home menu and you now tap on charge your other EV, It'll populate a map and it's going to show you a bunch of gray pins that indicate available Tesla supercharger stations. However, it knows that I have Volkswagen ID4. It knows which ones actually have Magic Docs outfitted on them. And so it's showing you with a red pin the one Tesla supercharger near me that has Magic Docs outfitted on the stalls. And it's right there in Carson. I'm magnifying into it. If we magnify in a little bit more, it's going to show the number 11 indicating, or now number 10, indicating the number of available stalls. So we're going to tap on that red pin that says number 10, and it's going to show you the menu for that station. And sure enough, it is in Carson on East Carson Street. It says 10 out of 20 stalls are available. They can charge at a max rate of 250 kilowatts, which is great because my car maxes out at 135 kilowatts. So this station would be able to give me my max charge rate. It also shows you which stalls are out of order. It says 4A is out, is out of order, which is really nice. It shows you the charging fees underneath that. And it shows you the address where you could map yourself to it directly. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get ourselves there. So the way that I like to do that is I like to use a better route planner, which I'm going to open right now. And I've kind of already pre-entered that Carson Tesla supercharger into a better route planner. Um, I'm connected to Enode. Through, through a better route planner right now. And so it's showing you my current state of charge at 21%. And the better route planner is also now showing you what my estimated state of charge will be when I get to that Tesla supercharger and it's showing 17%. So we're gonna tap drive. So the next time you see me, I'll be pulled up to that Tesla supercharger about ready to hopefully start a charge. Well, let's go. And as I come around to this Tesla supercharger station, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to check plug share just to see if there's any notation on any of the chargers, which is something I recommend doing even if you're not going to a Tesla supercharger. So for those of you who aren't familiar, plug share is a free app you can download from your app store. And the thing that it allows for is EV customers to leave notes about charging stations and how well equipped they are and whether they work or not. 
and it gives you tips on what to expect at that charging station. So let's open up Plug Share. And we're going to tap on that orange pin where our geolocation blue dot is. So we're going to tap on that orange pin. It is the Karsten Event Center. It is a Tesla supercharging station with 20 plugs. That's great. We're going to tap on it to see if there's any available uh, notation. It does say it is open to non-Teslas, which is really nice. And let's scroll down to see if anybody said anything interesting. So I always look for the latest notes because that'll give you the best indication of what to expect. This gets a 9.0 plug share score, which is pretty darn good. Basically, it's saying that chances are you're going to get a charge here. And it looks like all the recent notation is positive. A lot of green check marks, which is always good. The red means somebody had a problem. But it's all green, so it looks like we should have no problem here. Okay, so we have successfully found a open stall here at this Tesla Supercharger station. Kind of nice. Every stall is outfitted with the magic dock here. So there are 20 stalls. I could charge at any of the 20. Now, right now there are 10 open. So we're going to go outside, check out the stall, check out the magic dock, see what post we're at, and then we're going to get a charge started. So as we go outside, the first thing we're going to do is check which post we're at. And it's right there at the bottom, very, very clearly labeled as opposed to Electrify America. And we're at 5B. Now you'll see that the Magic Dock itself pulls out of here. And ba basically what we're going to do is hold down this button here and then press up to take out the CCS1 adapter portion of the Tesla connector. But before we do that, we need to get our charge started. So we're going to go back into the Tesla app. We're going to scroll up. We're going to tap on charge here. Now, once you do that, You'll, you'll be brought to a page where you can enter the post that you're at. Again, we just saw that I'm at 5B. So we're going to scroll to the right until we see 5B. There it is. We're going to tap on 5B. And then we're going to start charging. So let's tap on start charging. It immediately brings you to a menu that says plug in to start. It says after plugging in, it may take up to two minutes to start charging. Thank you, Tesla, for that indication. So again, to unhook the CCS1 portion of the adapter out, you're going to press in the button here for a few seconds. You're going to feel it click. And while the button is still depressed, you're going to push up and then pull it out. So you can see here that the normal, the normal Tesla adapter is small in my hand here. The CCS portion is this kind of bulky piece here that I'm trying to focus on. So let's bring it around to the front and let's open our port, take off our CCS flap, and let's situate this guy in. Easy, really easy hook. As we come around here, you can see that the stalls are in pretty good condition here. Uh, and these have longer cables than the, than the typical Tesla supercharger stations would have. And that's to enable easy access to non-Tesla EVs. Uh, my car just got a notification that charging has started. So let's take a look here. We're immediately popped up to 126 kilowatts uh, charge speed which is very good for 17% state of charge, I would expect right about where we're getting. Really clean charging session initiation here. Over here, my car's indicating it's gonna be about a 35 minute charge back up to 80%. Again, we started at about 18%. Now, something that I've complained about before is how at Electrify America, there's no indication of how long you might have to wait if all chargers are occupied. At Tesla supercharger stations, the app will show you this if all the charging stalls are occupied. This was just the other day. I happened to open the app to check on this charging station. Uh, there were zero of 20 stalls available, and it actually gives you an indication of how long you can expect to wait. Now, as I'm waiting for my charge to complete here, this is a new charging station. Again, this is only two weeks old, and it's set up in a way where the cables are extra long, which makes it easy to charge if you have a non-Tesla. And also the parking spots are set up in a way where you don't have to take up two parking spots if you have a non-Tesla. And when I drove up, I was expecting to have to take up two parking spots and maybe piss some people off, but that didn't actually have to happen. So, so far, I really like the station. Now, here's what the Tesla app shows as you're charging. I'm on the home menu again, and you can see at the bottom there where it says charge your other EV. By the way, other EV means non-Tesla EV. In green, it says in progress. So let's tap there. It'll bring you to this menu, which is kind of nifty. It shows you your current state of charge. I'm at 30% shows you your charging fees. 
um, at $5.50, shows you your charging rate, 122 kilowatts currently, shows you total energy delivered, 11 kilowatt hours, and it shows you your duration of your charge. I'm, I'm, I'm just about at six minutes right now. So lots of good data in typical Tesla fashion. Now on the top right there, if you tap on those three vertical dots and you tap on site details, and so it gives you all the nifty details. And one thing I write like is that busy times map right in the middle there. It shows you when, you know, it shows you basically the best times to come and charge. And you can see that we're, we're at a time here where it's getting pretty crowded. So as I'm charging here, I wanna show you what the post actually looks like. You can see that there's uh, no LCD display on any of these Tesla supercharging posts. I uh, kind of like that because the LCD screens on Electrify American on EVGo and ChargePoint, the only thing that ever happens to them is that number one, they don't give you a lot of huge data that you can't get on the app. And they always end up getting cracked, fogged or broken. So uh, I appreciate the, the simplicity of this Tesla post as opposed to EA or EVGo. So if you turn around here and you look at the rest of the charging station right now, about half full, but simplicity and organization seems to be the name of the game here. And I really like the fact that there are 20 stalls and each one of them is outfitted with the magic dock. If I magnify over here, you're going to see a piece of paper that says out of order on the very stall that the app indicated was out of order. So again, the app actually told the truth, which is a nice break from Electrify America or others. So I'm in the Tesla app once again because our charge is about to end. It's been about 32 minutes. We're at state of charge of 79%. We've been charged about 24 bucks currently charging at 65 kilowatts, and there it goes. It just stopped. Both my car sent me a message, and the app clearly showed that the charge has stopped at 11.16 a.m. after about what I think ended up being 31 minutes, which is pretty good. So as we go around to unplug, you can see that the charge port light has turned white, and it doesn't seem to want to come out. So let's see what we can do to make that happen. I'm gonna press the unlock button on my car twice, because this has happened before. And we're gonna try to pull. That is not working. We're gonna depress the button at the top and try and pull. That is not working. We'll press the button at the top of the magic dock. There we go. So we just saw how that works here. As I plug back in, you have to press that down all the way and then the uh, magic dock will release. And we're gonna latch it. So again, just to reiterate there, to unlatch the Magic Dock from your CCS1 port, what I found out that you have to do is you have to depress the gray button that's on the Magic Dock adapter itself, and you'll feel it unlatch. And then you're gonna pull the Tesla plug out. So in total, we were here in Carson charging at this Tesla supercharger with the Magic Dock for 32 minutes. We charged from the state of charge of 17% all the way up to 80 and we are charged 24 bucks for that charge. Pretty unproblematic from start to finish. The only issue we had was unlatching the magic dock at the very end there, but you just saw the solution in how to do that. So moving forward, I don't anticipate having that issue. And I'm pretty excited that I've got a new Tesla supercharger station to charge at here, pretty local to me. If you learned something, found it informative, make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you next time.